thank you again for doing this. Um, sure. Do you want to go ahead and sort of tell me your job title and what your job duties entail? Sure. Um, I'm the financial controller. Um, I was hired as accounting manager back in 2011 and became the controller, I think four years later. So I guess I've been controller for five years. So okay. uh, my job varies from day to day. Right now I'm in the middle of property taxes month in close, financial statements, payroll is this week, um, journal entries, accruals, mm -hmm. uh, basically anything that involves money. Yeah, and, and um, you are working from the office currently, so um, yeah. what is the, is there a reason that you're working from the office at home, like are there things about your job that can't be from home? For security mm -hmm. reasons, I really can't do payroll from home because I would have to have employees personnel files at my house, which I can't do. Mm -hmm. And um, th that's every two weeks. So that's one thing. And then also we get our client, you know, our vendors and uh, customers are still sending in checks and expect checks for payments. So we can't really mm -hmm. go to the bank and uh, deposit funds or go to the mailbox. Uh, without coming in here first. So for me personally, it's just easier to come in here daily. But I have been told I could work from home. They would make sure to figure out a way. Sure. Um, work around it. But I'm just comfortable here. So and it's really just me and maybe four other people in the whole building. So I'm really doing the social distancing. OK, perfect. Um, so when you're working from home or when you're working from the office, how do you keep yourself productive, um, you know, getting through everything you've got to get done? Well, that's another thing that's that was difficult for me to do at home because I have a child and dog and mm -hmm. they think if I'm home, then I should cater to them when I'm really on the clock. Um, so that's another reason why it's easier for me to be here where I have the structure, the setup, and I don't have a a child and dog bothering me every few minutes. Yeah. So, um, I I imagine it's a struggle for a lot of parents right now who are still having to go to work that have kids definitely. at home and, you know, not sure where to bring them, especially, you know, with social distancing, you don't want to, you know, bring exactly. in a babysitter, things like that. So it's good that you have that, you know, that option with your brother. To yeah, bring my him mother in. actually, my mother actually used, usually keeps him, but my mother had a kidney transplant about five years ago. So we definitely don't want her to even leave the house. So we don't mm -hmm. want the children around her. So sure. my brother actually doesn't mind. So he actually has been sent help. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so you're able to see your brother. How are you able to con keep connected to, you know, your mother, your coworkers, things like that? What are you doing to stay connected to people? Um, mostly phone. Uh, my team is still, um, we're actually using this Microsoft Teams and it's worked really mm -hmm. well for my team. Um, my staff does come in on Wednesdays because the accounts payable, of course, needs to cut checks. And mm -hmm. um, so actually most of them are here on Wednesdays, which is nice to see them. It's almost like I look forward to Wednesday every week because then yeah. I have some people to see. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, we still do the social distancing, but at least you've got somebody you can see six feet away. Um, mm -hmm. But we're staying connected through text and phone and the meetings and um, and it's worked. It's just kind of lonely in here during the day mm -hmm. um, because there's just not many folks here. So sure. but we're making it work. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. What, um, from what's happening right now, like what um, positive takeaways do you think are coming out of this that maybe will carry on after things get back to normal? Well, sometimes I run a real well, I do run a tight <laughs> ship and I'm not the most friendliest person, but I'm really an introvert. I mean, it's it's not that I'm intending to be, you know, abrasive or mean. It's just I'm shy. I'm terribly shy. I always have been. So it kind of comes off as that. But um, I think I'm actually going to be more of a personable person after this because I am missing, even though I only had, you know, mostly contact with my superiors or my staff, I actually think I'll probably won't want to reach out to people more often than I'm used to because of this. Sure. I, well, I'll say this. In all the interactions we've had, I've never gotten that that vibe okay. from you. It's been, always been nothing but friendly to me. So well, I appreciate so, that. For me. But really, yeah. it is my shyness. It comes across sure. sometimes differently to other people. But 
I'm sure. a terrible introvert, big time. <laughs> yeah, nothing like forced isolation to make you miss people. I know, right? <laughs> it's like you start appreciating relationships and friends more than you ever have before. I mean, I think people are gonna, and teachers, oh my gosh, teachers, I love them. I have no idea. <laughs> how much they make exactly, but it's not enough because homeschooling mm -hmm. is not fun. I'll just say yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Um, not so fun. You, you've been at Norgon, you said since 2011, so I'm sure you've had a lot of great memories. What's your favorite Norgon memory? Well, I thought about it, and really the one that keeps popping in my head is the first year we did the employee year, uh, employee of the year awards. Mm -hmm. um, we started that, I'm wanting to say in 2016, I can't remember, maybe before that. Um, but it came down to myself and Steve Clute. We were mm -hmm. the two final people of that year. And to give you a little background, you know, nobody can spend any money around here without me knowing it. And yeah. somehow, or another, somehow or another, Bill Hathaway snuck out and bought a car, mm -hmm. and I didn't even know anything about it. But um, Steve Clute ended up winning, and it was the most emotional day. I mean, he was just so thrilled and mm -hmm. shocked. We were all shocked when that car came out because that was the prize for the winner. Yeah. And his face, he he got so emotional, and I started crying. I think Don Ehlers even shed a tear. Oh, I mean, wow. it was just the most emotional reaction I'd ever seen and he was so appreciative and just seeing his face was like amazing like I'll never forget that day it was just a really great surprise that nobody knew about except yeah. the you know level people but yeah that it was a amazing. great memory pretty great memory yeah I know we have some pictures of it somewhere in our archives so I'll have to be sure to share some of those with our, yeah, with our social media face. so they just, can see it was just something else there's just yeah. something else so you work, obviously, since you're in um, finance, you interact with a lot of the different departments. So if you were to change jobs with any one person in the company, you unfortunately can't take their salary, yeah. but you can take their responsibilities for a day, who would you pick? Um, the only, uh, one of the big reasons I think I would choose Dave Covington is because my son is so interested in coding and engineering. Like he, mm -hmm. he really is interested in that and I'd love to connect with him on that. He's mm -hmm. far superior for his age and intelligence. And sadly I'm not. So um, sometimes it's hard for he and I to connect just because his brain operates very differently than mine. But sure. also I'd just like to know how the products are made exactly, you know, and how the coding works and, that's the basis of our business plan to begin with was JPro, mm -hmm. and um, you know I'd just be interested in knowing the back end of it, I guess. So yeah, I think that's a good choice. Yeah. Couple fun questions. What is your favorite movie? Um, Beauty and the Beast, and I, uh, I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. um, I've always connected to it, even when I was a teenager, but then I took my brother, my brother and I have a pretty large age difference. I'm 10 years older than him. Mm -hmm. And I drug him to the theater to see that. I think I was a teenager and he may have been 10. And of course, I stayed till the very end, all the credits, all the songs. I sang as loud as I could, embarrassed him mm -hmm. to the top degree. But then I got the chance to take his daughter you know, oh. when the when it came back out to the theater. Mm -hmm. And that was just a real special memory for me to have took taken him and then took his daughter. So it was, it, it, it'll always hold a special place in my heart. That's really nice. What do you think about the, um, the remake that they did? Were you a fan? I thought it was good. I mean, I'm still an old school girl, um, but sure. the it, they did really well. And of course, I'm a Harry Potter fan, so they didn't hurt me any mm -hmm. by putting Hermione in there, so. Sure. Uh, that made it even better. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, when you are not having to social distance and stay home as much as possible, what do you like to do in your free time? Um, I really work a lot uh, mm -hmm. to Bill and Don and Tim's uh, uh, amazement. I actually do uh, put my whole heart and soul in this job, so it takes a big piece of me. 
But when I'm not working, I actually do a lot of advocate work for the Dragonfly House, which is a um, nonprofit in Moxville, North Carolina, and they actually help um, abuse children. Oh, and wow. I was, I'd hate to call myself a victim. I was a survivor of child abuse as a child. So it holds a real special place to me. And every year on my birthday, I donate um, some money for how many years that I've been a survivor. So, um, yeah, so I always do that. And then I've actually got my brother's church to do a project with them and donate a bunch of supplies. And then I've got my own church and then my family has adopted them at Christmas a few times because we like to do something for somebody else. I mean, you know, really nowadays people have enough, you know, we, we're always, you know, complaining we have too much stuff. So we always at Christmas, we get the children things, but we always pick a charity and I've been lucky enough that they've chosen Dragonfly House a couple of times. So, That's but they do amazing work, amazing work. So, so I'm just curious, is there ways that people, if they wanted to help this organization, especially right now, because I imagine, um, oh, you yeah. know, like everyone else is struggling, is there is there good ways for people to, to help that organization right now? Well, they have a website. Um, you can just Google Dragonfly House in Moxville. And um, they're always, you know monetarily is a great idea but they're always needing like t-shirts for children because you got to think when they come in the good thing about this place is that from start to finish that child doesn't leave that place until they meet with the social worker um the judge the attorneys they meet everybody in the same building so they're not shuffled around and have to retell their story you know 20 million times so they of course sometimes have to take their clothes and things and so they they need t-shirts, they need blankets. The kids sometimes, it's a comfort to have a blanket. Uh, of course, they need cleaning supplies, you know, for the children there, snacks for the children, juice boxes for the children. Um, they're always in need of stuff like that. So, but yeah, definitely Google their their uh, their site. Um, and they actually have an Amazon wish list too. Oh, so perfect. you can actually look on Amazon and get things shipped directly to them, so. That's amazing. Um, they're great. They're a great organization. Yeah. One quick last question. Um, what are you most looking forward to once this is all over? Um, seeing my mom. I haven't seen her very much. Um, I talk to her, but I'm, I miss seeing her. My mm -hmm. family in general, really. Um, my friends, my best friend, actually, her son just turned eight and we had a drive by birthday party, which was mm -hmm. cute. We made signs and held them out the doors and honked our horns and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, something, but it's hard to explain to children, you know, especially that young, why they can't have a birthday party. And sadly, our children are young such a short time. Sure. Um, so, so that was fun, but I'd love to have seen him open his presents. So mm -hmm. I, I just miss people. I just miss people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I think we're all going to be a little bit, more excited to spend time with people I once think this is so. over. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think everybody's going to be more appreciative of people in general, which, mm -hmm. you know, this virus has actually brought the good out in a lot of people. And it's, it's mm -hmm. really heartwarming to see. It really is. It really is. It well, is. Tim, I appreciate, you, um, I appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. Sure. And I, I will say this, I've talked to a couple other people before you, and you're the only person so far because you're in the office that I know for certain is wearing pants. Yes, I am. <laughs> I think Tim Big would be very upset if I wasn't, so. Yes. Yes, yes. wearing pants, yes. Well, Tim, um, thank you again, and uh, have a good rest of your day. Sure, I appreciate it, Allie. Absolutely, thank, thank you. You too, bye.